Psychic Fraud News, brought to you by fans of Vegemite, because mm, 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 Vegemite's nice. Mm. Roll the intro. Mm. Go on. Okay, the future. What the fuck is gonna happen to me? Okay, through contact with something personal to Get you. Get your fucking hands off my face. With missing person cases, psychics love to get involved. They love to throw in their two cents worth, you might say. And recently, a missing person case, a boy of 14 from Queens, New York, ran away from his school, and we don't know what happened to him. This was over a week ago. So now, the psychics have come out of the woodwork and are helping to find the boy. Problem is though, they're pretty unlikely to succeed other than by some level of chance. And as the case gathers more and more publicity, as it may well do, it's inevitable that more psychics will get involved and throw in their two cents worth throw in their opinion, say what they think happened, and if a few out of these hundreds of people, because by the end of it it probably will be hundreds, giving their opinion, if a few get a few points right, they may well milk that for publicity, saying they helped the police. Yes, we helped the police. We helped to find that boy. We sent a tip off, an anonymous phone call to the local police suggesting that they sent something or saw something in a dream, or some other phenomena, an angel told them. And really, they help nothing. They're wasting police time and money. Money and time, which could be put towards actually helping people, including helping to find this boy who's gone missing. The boy who went missing was heavily autistic and unable to communicate verbally. So consider, if you will, the real issue. A young man who's unable to cope with stressful situations has basically run away and the psychics are getting in the way of police activity by claiming to have superpowers by claiming to have magical abilities which they cannot prove and they cannot confirm in controlled conditions and of course if they were truly psychic and truly able to do what they claim surely they could tune in or trip out or whatever they decide to do, whatever they call it, and sense where he's at. I've done this and I've gone through it so many times and people, I even went through with the shrink one time and told him something. And he looked at me and he just says, oh well, walked away and when it came true within about three weeks, my phone rang during the night and he woke me okay, up. Okay, sir, uh, here's what I recommend. Uh, you, yeah. got, you got access to the internet? No, I don't have computer. Mm, fi find somebody that does and uh, uh, do a search for James Randi, hmm. R-A-N-D-I. This guy is a uh, former stage magician, and he's got a $1 million prize for anyone who can prove uh, under scientific conditions that they have any kind of supernatural abilities like the ones that you're claiming to have. If you would like to have a million dollars, you contact that man and you work with his team to set up a valid scientific experiment to prove the existence of the abilities you claim. And if you can prove them, they give you a million dollars. Well, it's not just with everybody. Not, you know, that. I, but if you're, if you're asking us to believe that you have some kind of special powers, what we're going to ask you to do is prove it and not only is there a way for you to do that, there's a way to do it and make money at it. So, um, you know, short of that, uh, we're going to sit here and, and shrug our shoulders and say, it sounds like we got a kook on the phone. A Manhattan fortune teller called Sylvia Mitchell has been found guilty of fraud. She swindled out of two of her clients 
138,000 US dollars. This woman, unlike the garden variety psychic, decided not merely to charge them and say, well, come back in the future, but to insist, to force, and to milk her following for cash. Rather than merely getting by on a relatively small wage, as many psychics do, she decided to go whole hog and milk the cash cows. Simple. And she's been found guilty. Thank goodness for sane, no-nonsense justice. Crushing this individual and their scam. Now, at the end of the month, on the 29th of October, she's going to be sentenced. And she could face up to 15 years in prison for her crimes. I hope she does. I hope a few years, banged up, will teach her a lesson. And it should send a message as well. It should send a message to the psychics around the world if you push too hard, if you swindle people of their cash, you're gonna get fucked. Because, the, you know, you're making these incredibly vague predictions and then patting yourself on the back when they come true. You, what you need to do to prove that you have actual abilities is make specific predi predictions, things that where you can actually be tested on them, things where, you know, it's not just the normal course of affairs is going to result in some bad thing happening to some random person in three weeks. Of course it will. That doesn't prove anything. The worst kind of psychic is this really low-level street psychic. I mean street psychic as in they're on the street, they approach someone who looks a bit down, they trick them and get some money out of them. And they even tell them all sorts of bullshit about being cursed or having demons or dark spirits attached. And some people, if they're really down, they fall for it. They do. One particular case in Seattle, a woman called Mishka, she fell for this. She was feeling a bit down, a bit low. She wasn't really aware of the trick being played. And they said that she was cursed and they could remove the curse just for 3,000 US dollars. But you know, it's a discount as well. We'll give you a discount because you're a good person. $1,000. That's all. Just $1,000. Not three, one, not two. No, no, one, one. And thankfully, she didn't have that much money. I suppose. But they walked her to the nearest ATM, the nearest cash point machine, to withdraw her last $60. The last $60 to her name they got out of her bank account. Now, if this young lady had had more money in her account, they would have scammed her even more. Without a question, they would have got that money off her and probably would have done some kind of ritual or healing process, some kind of bullshit to get money off her. But really, it's about people being tricked and people willingly accepting a seemingly noble scam. Like, oh, we're psychic and we can tell you a few things, they tell them a few things, and we've sensed this around you and there's a whole problem around you. If you've been feeling low, it's because you've got this attached and that attached, and then it comes to the money. So I wonder, and you know, there's a good little video with the article you can watch, but I wonder how many other people have been tricked in this way? How many people are there doing this? Because this is not merely a thing restricted to that particular city, of course. I've seen it in Birmingham, I've seen it in London, and I'm sure many people out there, you have seen it too. Whether they claim to be psychic, claim to be followers of a particular guru, fake psychic who wanders around and acts like they can do all this kind of stuff, or a gypsy, a person saying they're of uh, an elite gypsy bloodline of psychics and fortune tellers, and they do the same trick. A few bits of cold reading, they get you on side, they get your trust, and then say they can do a full reading for a bit of money. They might even give you a little token, a little, a little memento, something to bring you luck, something which has been blessed, and they'll try and push. And if you go further and further down the rabbit hole, 
sooner or later they say well if you pay 500 if you pay a thousand if you pay 3,000 we can remove a negative entity which has become attached to you these people are sick and they know who to go to a person looks down a person looking at their feet looking down to the ground and they realize they can prey upon them they pick on the vulnerable you just need to pick out a few characteristics of weakness and then coerce people with a few suggestive ideas and words a few bond statements and if you do it enough all you need is one one person to do it one person to fall for it enough to give you a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars and that's been a good day you know you get a few people to give say 60 50 100 then that's covered you for the day but you get someone to give you a thousand or 500 you're doing very well and sadly people fall for this because rationality is impaired when you're down when you're depressed when you've got other things on your mind stress when you're mourning or anything like this people are vulnerable to these concerns people are weakened when it comes down to matters of the self and their own suffering their own problems in their life and these vultures prey upon people then again most psychics and mediums and the like seem to prey upon people like that as well people who are desperate are willing to go along willing to try willing to give more money willing to surrender to the possibility until i walked through that door i foolishly hoped you changed enough for me not to have to do this stay kill him i'm not here as your prisoner davros but your executioner had a headline the item was titled bogus psychic scam psychics is another one by the way if there was anything in it yeah there, there would still be anything. vast amounts that were yeah. being, being invested in trying to refine yeah. these skills if, if there's anything in it it would be significant genetic advantage for them to become more sexually successful over the last few thousand years and we would evolve to the point where there were many many of them yeah. rather than it all be like we would all be like if there's something in it you know what I mean? yeah. like sight yeah, uh, or or the or like ability to hear things, then it would have evolved across the entire population. Do you think was there a point before sight evolved among humans? Well, there wasn't. But say there was a point yes. before sight evolved among humans that there were people who pretended they could see, uh, just for entertainment. Possibly, and they would sell tickets to shows everywhere. Yeah. People would go, no, this is ridiculous. They yeah. go, no, no, I, I can say you've this. got you've got hair which is a colour I shall define as red. <laughs> yes, I've always yeah. felt like I did. Yeah.